Hello everyone, it's Mark from Silence Tech and I'm back again with another review. KB Lake has finally been released to the masses and with it comes a whole new lineup of boards. Today we're going to be checking out the ASUS Z270 Tough Mark 1 motherboard. In this review I will be showing you everything from how well the board can overclock the new Intel i7-7700K as well as all of its other features. First up, let's check out the box. Straight away you'll notice that this motherboard comes with a massive 5 year warranty as well as obviously support for Intel's Z270 chipset, Nvidia's SLI and AMD's Crossfire. Onto the board itself, it has a lot of features. One particular feature that separates it from the rest of the crowd is that tough armour. On the back of the board there is also a tough fortifier that not only protects the back of the board but it also strengthens the whole board itself so there is zero flex from heavy graphics cards or CPU coolers. Moving the motherboard back round, ASUS's thermal armour continues with a plastic cover that sits at the bottom of the motherboard. It certainly won't provide anywhere near as much strength to the board compared to the rear fortifier, but the whole idea of the front is to protect any front components from damage. The motherboard doesn't just have tough armour either, but tough components as well. Tough TI caps, new tough alloy chokes made with various types of metal instead of standard iron and tough MOSFETs helping extend the motherboard's overall lifespan. ASUS must be pretty confident that these parts are going to stand the test of time with the included 5 year warranty. Checking out the rear I.O. I was extremely impressed with the amount of USB and other ports available on this board. Running through the ports from top to bottom, the TUF features four USB 2.0 ports. The first one is used for flashing the BIOS with a USB drive. Underneath that there's what looks like another USB port but in fact is used in conjunction with a mobile device to monitor real time statistics as well as postcodes which can be extremely handy if your motherboard's failing to to post as the code will allow you to diagnose the error online. Continuing on, the Tufts rear I.O. has a clear CMOS button, a HDMI 1.4B and a DisplayPort 1.2 output for using your CPU's onboard graphics. There's also two USB 3.0 ports and two LAN ports, two USB 3.1 ports, one type C and one type A. And lastly, there's various audio jacks for microphones, headphones and a surround sound enabled system. The TUF motherboard still features the LGA1151 socket, so thankfully it's compatible with not only the new KB Lake CPUs such as the 7700K but the older Skylake CPUs as well like the 6700K and I also had no trouble fitting my H100i from Corsair onto the board and anyone building a new rig will find it extremely easy to switch from an older platform straight to Z270. Moving on to the dim slots, much like the previous Z170 platform this board features four slots with a maximum capacity of 64 gigabytes of DDR4. You'll notice that the dim slots are black and beige. Personally I think the beige looks a little bit out of place and it won't be to everyone's taste but in case you're wondering I have 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum Special Edition DDR4 currently installed on the board and it's running at 3200 megahertz with XMP no problem at all. Next let's check out the storage options for this board. You'll be able to install an M.2 drive by unscrewing the plate at the bottom of the motherboard. You'll have the option to install various M.2 modules of different sizes such as 2242, 2260, 2280 and 2210. The motherboard has six SATA ports that can handle speeds of up to six gigabits per second. The board allows you to hook up plenty of SSDs and hard drives, but just to note, 
case, SATA port 1 shares its bandwidth with the M.2 port I mentioned earlier. Fan support for this board is second to none. You'll be able to hook up 10, yes 10 in total, 2 CPU headers, 5 chassis headers and 1 water pump header. Each header is very well placed, not only are they placed conveniently around the board, they make cable management super easy. Quickly finishing off, looking at the top right of the motherboard, there's a memory compatibility button and right next to that there's a lovely beige 24 pin and USB 3.0 header. At the bottom of the board there's various USB 2.0 ports, an extra USB 3.0 port and a dedicated power button removing the need to jump the motherboard. Now it's time for the fun part, overclocking. I'm going to be one of the first people to release overclocking results for the 7700K, so I'm pretty excited. Overclocking on the tough motherboard, like every ASUS motherboard, was a lot of fun. With Intel's new 7700K, I had zero trouble dialing in at overclock. Jumping into the Tufts BIOS, I went straight to an advanced mode and onto the AI tweaker tab. I went straight in and bumped up the core ratio to 5 GHz and paired that with 1.3 5 volts. I'm not sure why but I just had a feeling that the 7700K was going to handle that no problem at all. Sure enough once I booted up Windows, ID64 absolutely loved it, but the temps were a little too high for my liking, hitting 85 degrees. I dialed back the voltage to 1.31 volts and I saw temperatures no higher than 81 degrees Celsius, although you can expect temperatures a lot lower than that when gaming or using the 7700K for strenuous work tasks. As a direct comparison with my own personal 6700K, that overclocked to 4.6 GHz at 1.35 volts, so the 7700K overclocked extremely well, and although at stock you'll only get about a 5-7% to performance increase, over the 6700K, the 7700K seems to have more headroom, and it was great to see the CPU easily hitting that 5 GHz promised land. Back to the tough motherboard, it allowed me to achieve the best possible overclock from the 7700K and I highly recommend it for even the most advanced overclockers out there. Also, after I left ID64 stress testing through the night, the next day enabling XMP overclocked my memory to 3200 MHz and so far the system has never missed a beat. I'm more than likely going to keep this motherboard in my system from now on and it's great to see I'm finally part of the 5 GHz mass. To race. Lastly, before I wrap up this review, the TUF has full RGB backlighting. If you pair it up with a Strix graphics card, your whole system comes to life. You'll need to first download the Aura software from the ASUS website, but once you've done that, there's a whole host of lighting options to choose from. The great thing about the Aura software is that you can sync up all of your ASUS products together. Apparently, this won't just be limited to what ASUS or ROG products you have inside your PC case either. The Aura software will also allow you to link up the new ROG Claymore keyboard as well, so it's going to be really exciting to see where ASUS go with this. Right now I'm picturing a wave effect going from my PC across my keyboard and mouse and straight back to my PC again. That would be absolutely fantastic. But I think that pretty much covers the whole review guys. As a summary, ASUS continue to deliver some of the best motherboards on the market and as we all know ASUS boards are held in extremely high regard across the whole PC community and the Z270 Tough is probably going to be no exception. Finally, the award I'm going to give has to be a Platinum. The board is pretty much perfect. The only thing that might put you off is its design. Originally I was going to give it a Gold award just because I don't quite like the beige accents in and around the board, especially on the dim slots. But that said, the thought of my keyboard's lighting linking up to the rest of my PC tipped me over the edge and it's going to have to be the highest award Silence Tech can give. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the review of the ASUS TUF Z270 motherboard. I'm Mark from Silence Tech. Goodbye.